What is distortion? That's a very, very difficult topic. And I'm gonna try and do just a very, very simple overview because I had a question in one of the videos this week saying, oh, is this distortion? Does that count as distortion? Now, when we're talking about audio, we, you typically see something called uh, harmonic distortion or total harmonic distortion. And that's one of the main things that is used, you'll see on spec sheets for you know, loudspeakers or amplifiers or other pieces of electronics. And you know, what is harmonic distortion? Harmony, singing harmony or instrument harmony, you know that you know, it means that you've got a couple of things or more going on that are related to one another, that they're, they're in the same key but at different intervals or different octaves or, or, or whatever. And it's very simple, similar when we talk about harmonic distortion. Harmonic distortion just means that the distortion is some multiple of whatever the original content was. So if we take something simple like a sine wave that's a very pure single frequency, let's say it's, it's 1000 hertz or 1000 cycles per second as a nice round number, you're gonna have harmonics at multiples of that 1000 hertz sine wave. So your harmonic distortion, you may have even order as it's called distortion at, you know, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, etc. times the frequency of that original um, sine wave. So at 2,000, 4,000, 6,000, 8,000, etc. hertz. You'll also have something called odd order harmonic distortion, and I think you can see where I'm going here. That would be at 3,000 hertz, 5,000 hertz, 7,000 hertz, etc. And the even and odd order distortions sound different. Even order tends to sound pleasing, gives a slightly warm-ish sound in some cases. Um, odd order distortions, however, are really annoying sounding. They can be scratchy, they can be, you know, create harshness um, or hardness or, or make a component or a loudspeaker hard to listen to if you want to think about it that way. But, you know, we've only talked about this harmonic distortion. There are millions of types of distortions. By definition, when we talk, if we're talking at least just in audio circles, distortion means anything that your audio system, whether it's the speaker, amplifier, CD player, turntable, whatever, it's anything that's being created that's not in the original signal content. So if I have music playing from a CD, anything that changes the content that's coming off and being read off of that CD, whether it's in the electronics or in the loudspeaker, anything that is added that's not in that original signal is a form of distortion. So we can have all kinds of things. There can be distortions you know, related to mechanical things. Let's say your cabinet vibrates at certain frequencies and adds some output at those frequencies. Well, that's a form of distortion. What about timing? What about you know, phase? What about things like this? You know? All of these things are distortion. One of the things in the question that was brought up is what about compression? Is compression distortion? And compression means that you take a signal or let's say a music recording that has a wide range of very quiet and very loud either segments or instrumentation or whatnot and you essentially squash, squash the ceiling down. That's compressing it. That means that everything now sounds a little bit louder uh, because you compress it and unfortunately in the last decade or two, compression has become a thing that has really, really hurt the sound of a lot of recordings. Uh, people are, are doing it, I don't know, to make things sound louder and, and beat out a, you know, another tune or whatnot. But compression, certainly if the original music signal had a range like this and you compress it down to this, well, you've changed that original content, so you've distorted it. Now, what about things like 
lossless and lossy digital files. MP3s, for instance. Well, MP3s are, by their very definition, distorted. And the reason that they're distorted is that they do not contain all of the information of the original recording. So it's a distortion. Some stuff is thrown away and using something called perceptual uh, encoding, uh, they get rid of things that our brains are not going to miss, apparently, is, is, the, is the idea. But it's a distortion. It's a form of distortion. Let's say uh, you've got other things in your room that vibrate sympathetically with your audio system, you know, things that are glass or thin metal or whatever can vibrate, pictures on the walls, that's a form of distortion. It's something that's being added to the audible music signal that you're hearing that wasn't there originally. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that there's no way to get zero distortion in any chain, whether it's an audio chain, a video chain, whatever. Every component has distortion, right down to a lowly little passive uh, resistor component on a circuit board has self-distortion, has noise, has other things like that, which, you know, is just unavoidable. Just keep that in mind that there's distortion in, in everything. And the other thing is that I firmly believe that we have no idea how to measure all the different types of distortions, even within the audio world. We tend to look at a couple like harmonic distortion and intermodulation, which means what happens when you put two frequencies into a component or a loudspeaker. What happens when you put them both in at the same time? Does it create other things? And yes, it does, and that's called intermodulation distortion. But there's all kinds of distortions out there which in a music signal, which has got such complexity compared to the pure like sine waves or square waves that we use for testing in the lab or you know in development it's almost impossible to actually track exactly how many things are being changed and and where is the distortion happening i guess in the electronic chain it's a little bit easier than if you go right through an entire system to a loudspeaker in a room because now you've got additional layers of complexity. Distortion, unfortunately, is everywhere. Sometimes it's actually going to make things, you know, sound, you may find, more pleasing as the even order harmonic distortion I talked about earlier is a good case of that. But we can't get rid of it completely. We can only hope to minimize it as engineering moves forward. And just remember that there are many, many sources other than you know this total harmonic distortion or inner modulation, IMD distortion that, that you see on spec sheets. There are lots and lots of distortions and unfortunately, they're just a fact of life. Thank you again as always for watching.